She was buried alive in a mass grave with her entire murdered family. How could she forgive? Find out about the most powerful prayer on earth. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I love the rarefied air of heaven. That's what I mean by naturally supernatural, that God's kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. My guest, Peter Horbin, has keys as to why you've been robbed of your health, why you've been robbed of your joy, why you've been robbed even of your destiny. Now, Peter, there are doors that need to be opened. What are some of the doors that are robbing us? Well, our lives are a bit like a house where there's lots of rooms. And when something bad happens, we as it were close the door and lock it away and we move on and do it again and again and again. And some of those things behind those closed doors could be sexual abuse where we've been abused as children. It could be rejection, it could be traumas, it could be somebody who's caused a terrible accident and, and we blame them and we're holding them in bondage. Many such things from the past, uh, events which we are locked into and because we haven't understood the, the basic lessons which Jesus included within what we call the Lord's Prayer, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who are trespassed against now, us. You know, I have to tell you something, and I haven't told you this before. I have sat under a lot of teaching mm. on forgiveness, yeah. but there is something so supernatural on your teaching. As a matter of fact, you call it, and I would too, the most powerful prayer on earth I have been using, this is just one of many mm -hmm. keys, but I've been using this key and I use it instantly when someone offends me. And it is, it's supernatural. It's Explain the most powerful prayer on earth. Well, when Jesus was put on the cross, he was being nailed there by Roman soldiers. And his words were, Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. And earlier in his teaching, he'd said, bless those who curse you. Now, why would you want to bless somebody who's cursing you? Why would you want to forgive somebody who was nailing you? And the reality is that because of the fallen nature of our own hearts, we want to get back at people. And when we choose to be in revenge, in bitterness, and we attack them in our thinking, we're actually locking ourselves in to what they have done to us. And when you've so learned, in, in effect, we're drinking the poison that exactly. we want them to take. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and, and this is like a, a divine law that what we want for other people actually comes back and is the judgment that's upon us. But when Jesus said, bless those who curse you, he was giving us a, gu a guideline for life. He was giving us a principle through which to live, which he put right there into the Lord's Prayer. And you know, after he'd given us the Lord's Prayer, he gave the disciples the prayer. They said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And that first bit was, your kingdom come on earth. That's the kingdom authority of God being lived out through our lives here and now. He then said, forgive us our sins as we forgive others. But after he'd given the disciples the Lord's Prayer, you know, he's, he's a brilliant teacher. He always came back and he just reinforced the key things. And he said to the disciples, if you don't forgive, then my Father in heaven will not forgive you. Oh, that's quite shocking. Well, you know, I have to believe if those words are literal, 
that if I choose, and and it really is a choice, if I choose not to forgive, I'm not going to be forgiven. Now, if I'm not forgiven, you don't have to be a mental giant to figure out an unforgiven person does not go to a place called heaven. That's a horrible consequence. But this is really what Jesus was saying, that if we don't forgive others, then we cannot receive forgiveness. See, we are giving out a message to God, to talk about the golden rule, do unto others as you will be done by. So what do you want to do to others? I don't want to forgive them. Therefore, what, how do you want to be done by? Oh, I don't want to be forgiven. It's, it's like a divine law. You say, I'm not going to forgive somebody. Okay, you're telling God, I don't want to be forgiven. But when we actually come to that place of saying, God, with your help, I choose to forgive those who have hurt me. What we're doing is simply this. We're taking them off the hook of our lives and we're putting them on God's hook. I we're, like that. <laughs> we're, we're not that like, that's worse than anything I could do to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're still accountable to God. It's because sometimes people say, well, they don't deserve to be forgiven. You know, that's absolutely true. You know, Sid, you do not deserve to be forgiven for your sin. And I neither know do that. I. I know. It's not a question of do you deserve to be forgiven. Forgiveness is an act of grace and an act of mercy. And we come to God and say, God, in your mercy, will you forgive me? And he says, are you going to do to others in the same way that you're asking me to do? You know, he told that parable, didn't he, of the servant who had been let off a huge debt by the right. king. And what did he do? He went out and started to put somebody in prison for a small debt. And we're a bit like that sometimes. We ask God to forgive us of everything that we've done wrong. But in our hearts, we're still argh, angry, bitter, resentful against people who have hurt us. And what is that doing to us when we're bitter, angry, and resentful? Well, it does three things. One, it affects our relationship with God in the spirit. Two, it affects our emotions, the way we think, our mi- and, and our mind, the way we think, and our reactions, and then our body begins to pick up the message. And the message that our body picks up is that bitterness and resentment and anger are now beginning to control the way our body behaves. And even the medics will tell us that people who have got bitterness in the heart, they're much more vulnerable to things like arthritis, physical conditions, which are a direct consequence. I am amazed at how this is such a key to so many things. Don't go away. You're going to hear about amazing true life stories of people just like you. Lord, why aren't my prayers being answered? Please, Jesus, take away my broken heart. Oh, God, please tell me why I've not received my healing. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Peter Horobin wants to impart to you God's supernatural master key for healing, deliverance, prosperity, and freedom. Call now and receive both Peter Horobin's simply profound book, Forgiveness, God's Master Key, and his most significant audio CD teaching, The Most Powerful Prayer on Earth, yours for a donation of $24. Thousands worldwide have been healed through Peter Horobin's teachings. Through this book, you will understand seven steps that will eternally change your destiny. Learn how to get rid of emotional, mental, and physical pain. Begin walking in the blessings of God. Obtain God's master key for forgiveness that sets you free from trauma, rejection, betrayal, abuse, divorce, accidents, and so much more. Most Christians know that forgiveness is important, but very few of them understand how to do it. And what I put into that book is the principles of how to do it. And through Peter's audio CD teaching, you will pray the most powerful prayer on earth so you can receive healing in your spirit, soul, mind, and body. It is truly the most powerful prayer on earth. Don't miss out on getting both Peter Horobin's simply profound book, Forgiveness, God's Master Key, and his most significant audio CD teaching, The Most Powerful Prayer on Earth. Yours for a donation of $24. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9095 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Peter Horobin. And some of you have been abused when you were a child and you buried it deep. But it's time 
for freedom for you. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to be free. Peter, tell me the story of that woman in Russia, Olga. Yeah, uh, Bob and Olga uh, we came to one of our conferences and Olga had been brought up in Russia. She had had a, a really abusive childhood, but then she was sexually abused by Russian officers in the communist system. She had a horrendous childhood. Then she met and married an American Bob who was over there in business and he brought her back over here. And uh, years later, she has a scoliosis of the spine, constant pain, constant physiotherapy, no hope of anything being healed. And she came to the teaching on forgiveness. And as she heard the teaching that I've been sharing from the Word of God, she suddenly realized that God was saying there's a link between her twisted spine and the pain she's in constantly and the abuse that she suffered as a child. And right there, sitting in the seat, just listening to the teaching, even before I'd prayed for anybody, you know, you don't have to have someone pray for you. When you begin to actually put things right in your own heart, the Spirit and of God... And by the way, some of you can be doing that right now Absolutely. as Peter's talking. Yeah. Come on now. Your parents didn't raise a dumb person. No. Do something. Go yeah. ahead. So as I was teaching, she heard the message, forgive and she forgave. And as she was sitting there in the conference, she began to feel her spine being straightened. She couldn't understand what was going on, but she knew that there was a link now that God was working out. And when she got home that night, she looked at herself in the mirror and her previously twisted spine was absolutely straight. Mm -hmm. All the pain had gone. And she came back the following day to the conference, just absolutely rejoicing. She had forgiven. She turned, as it were, the master key, I like to talk about it. She forgiven and she'd spoken blessing out on those who'd abused her and hurt her. She opened the door that had been closed with all of that pain. Absolutely. And the pain left. <laughs> Jesus went into the room with her. And, I like that even better. And, and all the pain and all the suffering and all the demonic power. She was delivered. She knew she was being delivered of spirits of infirmity that were affecting her spine and holding it in that twisted position. Tell me about the woman in Rwanda. Yeah, Fr Frida was in an incident in the middle of the Rwandan genocide where all her family had been gathered together and they were about to be murdered. And the people who were doing the killing just gave them the option of how they were going to die. And they all chose how they were going to die. And they were too poor to buy a bullet, which would have been quick. And so they were hit on the back of the head by machetes. Mm. And she watched as her younger brothers and sisters were murdered one by one in front of her and her mother and all the rest of the family, 15 members of the family, and she was the 16th. All of them were put into a, a shallow grave. 14 hours later, someone sat on that grave and heard a noise from underneath. She was buried alive. She was buried. They With all she was of dead. her dead relatives. Absolutely. They thought she was dead. And she made a noise, and that was heard. And they scrabbled underneath, and they pulled her out. So she'd been lying for 14 hours with 15 dead members of her family. She fled the country. Out of the country, she made a friend who introduced her to Jesus. And she began to read what she called the book. And in the book, she began to see that not only had Jesus given a new life in relationship with God, but he wanted to live his life through her. And in the book it said, forgive. And so she said, I've got to forgive. And when she came back to Kigali after the genocide was over, she went to the jail where the man who had done the massacring was in jail and she spoke forgiveness to him for what he had done. How could she do that? Explain to me how she could do that. I mean, someone that murdered, and I mean murdered by hitting your relatives, your mother, your father, your brother, your aunt, your uncle on the head, and you, you're knocked out, and they're all put into a grave. You didn't do anything wrong, nothing wrong. You're buried alive, and you're telling me she went to the prison and forgave that person? She did, and that was the, the grace of God. You cannot do it except he gives you the courage to do it. And it's exactly the same thing. How could Jesus forgive those who were nailing him to the cross? It's actually a very similar situation. And he said, bless those who curse you. And when she came away from the jail, she was a different person. Many years later, she wanted to help her fellow Rwandans. And she came to one of our schools to train. But she was constantly in pain. The back of the head where she was hit with the machete, the pain never went away. Every night when she sank into semi-consciousness on her pillow, she was sinking into the grave, along with all the dead relatives. The trauma 
was right there every single night. And that conference, that school that she came on, I prayed with her that Jesus would go right into those memories, right into that moment of trauma, right into that moment when she had actually been put into the grave and to heal her at that moment in her history. And a transformation took place. The following morning, she came down from her room and she said, for the first night since the genocide, I have slept without any nightmares. I have no pain in my head. I've been back to Rwanda, I've been to her home, and she and her husband are now pastor of a 3,000 strong church in Kigali. Can you imagine and that from being buried alive to being a pastor of a 3,000 member church? If Frida could forgive, it's easy, mm -hmm. it's easy for you to forgive. When we come back, I'm going to have Peter pray for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! One new man. The convergence of Jews and Gentiles. The two becoming one new man in Yeshua. When Jews and Christians become one new man in Messiah Jesus, we will experience a move of God such as the world has never seen. Healings, blind eyes opened, diseases removed, miracles, supernatural events, the dead literally raised, multitudes saved, the final and greatest revival before the return of Messiah. If we want to experience God's glory right here now on earth, then we need to knock down the wall of division that separates Jew and Gentile. If you want to experience an explosive outpouring of God's Spirit, God's love, God's power, then log on to www.sidroth.org to learn more about the one new man. One spirit, one faith, one new man. We now return to It's Supernatural! I was very sick, and I could not understand why God didn't heal me. I felt as if all my prayers were being blocked. I just couldn't forgive my father for leaving us. It was like a cancer eating me up on the inside. You know, there is a real consequence to sin. There's a real consequence to unforgiveness. Uh, Peter Horbin, Tell me about Sarah. Sarah was very badly abused by her father, and the consequence of that abuse was long term. But you know, as she was growing up between the age of nine and 18, she was constantly being used in a sexual and a physical way. When we first met her, she was in psychiatric care because in her late 30s, she had completely fallen apart. She could no longer keep all the pain down and it broke out and she was in psychiatric care and she was on a lifetime psychiatric disability pension in the United Kingdom. The psychiatrist didn't believe there was any hope for her. And it was at that point she heard about our retreat and she got permission to come out of hospital under the care of the psychiatrist to come on this retreat. And she learned about forgiveness. She didn't want to forgive. She's had terrible experience. And yet, unless she forgave, and she knew that from the Word of God, unless she forgave, uh, she would never be able to enter into the freedom that Jesus had for her. It was a long process, but she came to that point of saying, I choose to forgive. The psychiatrist, he was amazed when he saw her again. Yes, she wasn't completely whole. She wasn't off medication, but she was different. And so he gave permission for her to come for a longer period of time. Three months later, my wife went back to see the psychiatrist with her, and he said, I don't need to see you again. She was off all medication. She'd been able to forgive, and not only forgive, the healing of being flowing on the inside. Today, she is totally restored. Having come from a lifetime of psychiatric disability, She's now completely whole. She's more whole, perhaps, than anybody I never knew. Peter, know. I am feeling, uh, I, I don't know what it is. It, it, it's a presence of God. It, 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 it's like honey. It's mm. smooth. I, I, 
you're supposed to pray right now yeah. for people. There's, some, there's an anointing yeah. for something special right now. There are many people who are, are watching this who have issues in their life, perhaps people who have been especially abused. They're, they've struggled with things in the secret, and I'm speaking to you right now. If you know that in your past there are people who have done things to you, unspeakable things, things that perhaps you've never been able to talk about, they've robbed you of your future, they've robbed you of relationships, that they've made it impossible for you to live in a normal way, I want you right now to ask God to give you the grace to forgive them, to release them into the freedom of your forgiveness and to say, I choose now to forgive John, forgive Mary, whatever their name may be, for whatever it is they've done and say, I release you and then ask Jesus to come and heal you. Ask him to come and set you free. Ask him to come and set you free from the powers of darkness. Ask him to let you out of the prison that you're in so that you can begin to get out into the open spaces of life and begin to enter into your destiny. He will do it. It's our choice whether we want to ask him to do it. I pray that you'll have the courage to make that choice. The presence of God is so sweet. Tell me about the woman that had her fourth pregnancy and enough was enough. This was an amazing story because she couldn't afford to have another child and she fell pregnant and she wished this child dead. She, she wanted it to die in the womb and so she actually cursed this child with death. The child didn't die. Many, many years later, something like 40 years later, she was present in one of my conferences and she heard me teaching about the words that we say can bring cursing upon other people. And she suddenly was convicted by the Spirit of God about what she'd said about her daughter. And she came and asked for prayer. And she confessed that as sin, and I spoke forgiveness to her. And she was just about to sit down when I suddenly heard the voice of God saying, you've got to pray for the daughter. So I called her back, and through the mother, I prayed for this woman who I didn't know anything about her. She wasn't even there. She wasn't even there. I just prayed that God would set her free from whatever had come upon her in her mother's womb. A year later, I was back in the same church, and this woman came running across the hall of the church with a photograph of a baby. Now, here's this woman. She's in her, in her mid-60s, and I thought, this is a miracle. <laughs> uh, Peter. And this look familiar? That, 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 that is, that is, that, that's the baby. And uh, she said, this baby was born to my daughter. Do you remember praying for her? And for a moment I didn't, but then I was reminded and she told me the story. That this woman, her daughter, had been married for 14 years and they'd been unable to conceive a child and were told that there was no hope whatsoever that they could ever have a child. Within a week of me praying for the daughter to be set free from whatever curses came upon her because of the wrongful words of her mother, she conceived a child. And this woman was so thrilled. She now has a grandson. People are being healed right now. Yeah. Tell them. Speak to them. Yeah. I see. As you receive truth into your heart about what God does to other people, you know what it does? It lifts your faith. And as you suddenly can see that if God's done it for somebody else, he can do it for me. So receive that now. Receive the joy of healing. And the joy of healing flows out of your spirit, into your soul, and into your body. So invite Jesus now to let the joy of his healing flow through your spirit, into your soul, into your body, as you forgive others, as you confess the things that you've done wrong. You know, it says in James, confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. As we bring to God the things that we've done wrong, then he can bring his restoring life into our lives and give us back our destiny. You know, I think it's interesting. You talk about people have to forgive, uh, ask for forgiveness yeah. for what they've done. They yeah. need to forgive other people. Uh, they, some of you need to forgive God. If in one minute you can tell me a story of someone that needed to forgive God. Yeah, see, if we blame God, for things that he's not done. We are actually putting him, as it were, in the jail. <laughs> and stupid! <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Satan is the God of this world, that, that man through his sin has put Satan in place. And the bad things that happen are Satan's fault. So if we blame God, what we're actually doing is saying that God is responsible for the works of the enemy. And sometimes people need to get to that place 
of saying, God, I am sorry for blaming you. You know, there's many, many people we've had to walk this through. Sarah was one of those. She had to come to that place of saying, God, why didn't you protect me? She was blaming God for the fact that she was not protected from her father's abuse. And she said, God, I am sorry for Father, blaming you. forgive them. They know not what they do. Mm -hmm. That was the prayer from the cross. And the moment, the second someone does something against you, say that, even out loud if necessary. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them. They're ignorant. They know not what they do. I want you to see those same people you saw that said they could not forgive at the beginning of this segment, and here's what they're going to say after they've forgiven. Look at the change in their life. Same change is going to happen in your life. See, once I truly, truly forgave them for what they did to me, only then did God heal me. It's like the heavens are no longer brass. My prayers seem to be getting right through to God Himself. You'll never know the freedom that it brings until you learn the importance of forgiveness. Peter Horobin wants to impart to you God's supernatural master key for healing, deliverance, prosperity, and freedom. Call now and receive both Peter Horobin's simply profound book, Forgiveness, God's Master Key, and his most significant audio CD teaching, The Most Powerful Prayer on Earth, yours for a donation of $24. Thousands worldwide have been healed through Peter Horobin's teachings. Through this book, you will understand seven steps that will eternally change your destiny. Learn how to get rid of emotional, mental, and physical pain. Begin and walking in the blessings of God. Obtain God's master key for forgiveness that sets you free from trauma, rejection, betrayal, abuse, divorce, accidents, and so much more. Most Christians know that forgiveness is important, but very few of them understand how to do it. And what I've put into that book is the principles of how to do it. And through Peter's audio CD teaching, you will pray the most powerful prayer on earth so you can receive healing in your spirit, soul, mind, and body. It is truly the most powerful prayer on earth. Don't miss out on getting both Peter Horobin's simply profound book, Forgiveness, God's Master Key, and his most significant audio CD teaching, The Most Powerful Prayer on Earth. Yours for a donation of $24. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9095 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. You've heard of Bonnie and Clyde. My guest was Bonnie and Clyde put together after a lifetime. As a career criminal, she experienced God and pursued Him with an even greater passion than she had for crime. She captured God's heart and received unique keys to the supernatural.